Oh, that sounds good. Right, I'm just testing the mic. The mic is fine. Catching it? Catching it. Welcome back, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming back here. Um, I haven't done this for a while um, due to the whole fiasco that's happening around the world. A little bit busy. But I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I can say one more time. Excited to add another series to my YouTube channel. So, We've got a component, we've got a container, we've built a some kind of app, we've got something that is shaped and um, we've got a little theory behind our, wheel, behind our back. What do I want to talk about? I want to talk about talking about um, how do you call an API? What is an API? I think it's a good question. If you're beginning, you don't know what it is. Um, if you're senior, I think you already know. API stands for application. I'm joking. Application stands for application programming interface. I almost forgot what I said. Anyway, so what's an API? API is something that you can call and it will return you back data. What we're going to be using today is going to be REST APIs. Hope you know it's REST API. So, what's the idea? We've got an Angular app. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Welcome to my little TV box. My name is Chris. I'm a JavaScript buddy. I do JavaScript. What does that mean? I do explain how you can build an app in Angular, how you can build an app in React. I cover or compare them both and I make you Decide if it's good, or bad, or crap. I mean the frameworks, the library, not me, maybe me. But so what do I want to talk about? And um, let's kick it off. We built, if I recall correctly, we've got two apps. We've got the React app, which is loading us dashboard and profile. Sounds good. You click around, it flips. Does it flip? It does flip. And then it loads the content differently. We've got let's see, location host 4000. Let's look at our Angular, the same thing, you click, it changes, it loads. Kind of sweet. So I found an API online, which is called Dummy REST API. Now dummy meaning mock data, not dummy that you're using it. And it's got a data block of users. Now what I want to do is get the on a called API, fetch, call, get, precisely, use a get method to get the data, return it back and load it into the screen. That'll be fantastic. I think so. So, if we can do that, I'd like to load on my dashboard page, I think on the dashboard, all the employees. And then I would like to click on the employee and see exact details about the employee. We then can build a more cool app or we can do some data matching. Or maybe create a dating app. Anyway, that looks a good idea. So, Bananas app, the same thing. I've got a dashboard. I will load the users into my page. I've got literally, I think, 20 minutes to do this with a quick video. Let's kick it off. Now, before we go into it, please guys, subscribe to the channel if you can, if you've got time, if you want it, if you like it, if you're oh, really, really interested in this, please do. Right. I bum, bum, bum. So, this is the Angle app. If you remember, recall it, um, like it. So, you've been following? This is all GitHub. Everything is on a branch. What branch am I talking about? If you go to Git branches in my repo, you'll see Angle Lesson 6. Lesson 6? Was I talking about Lesson 6? Right, what we're gonna do here is you go, you can really see the coffee just kicked in. Right, so the first thing I like to do, which I like to talk about, is in the components, I like to create these consts, components, and then list them here. It's nice to list them. Why? Because when I commit, this part will then change. And then I like to use spread operator to take out all the elements in the array and put them in this array. This is what spread is, it's part of ES6. Spread operator. I'm going to talk about spread and rest in one of the series. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is um, Angular. We have the app. What's well, the first thing thing to do? So in Angular, everything has its own responsibility. One of them are services. Services are responsible for calling APIs. You've got a service apart from the component. The component it needs to call the service. The service needs to call the API. The API needs to be done the data and then back to the component. Hope that makes sense. How do we do that? We do ng. Remember ng for the CLI, g for general things, c for the component, but this time we need s. And then what we like to do is in our services folder, and we do have a service, I think. Of course, services, it's an empty one. I will leave it empty for now. So what we would like to do is I would like to create a service component, and I think the one we're going to call it is employees. And this is going to be, ooh, left, right, employee service. And now this should generate a service file inside a service folder. This makes sense. Now it's generated. It. There you go. Beautiful. And it's got the test file, the log test, and a service file, employee service. Now in Angular, 
As you know, it comes with a rep, uh, modules with it because it's dependent on some stuff. And one of the dependencies that we all like is you can import in your node modules, if you, oh, node modules an engine module, is where you declare your imports dependencies. And I've imported the already HTTP client model, and that is coming from Angular component HTTP. This is something you need to add. So what you do, because I already had it. So what you can do is HTTP client module. Ah! HTTP client module. And the thing should import, but my ID is not importing. So I'm just gonna revert back. And that's the import. The import from Angular. Uh, so scope is the library common folder HTTP. I just need to add that. Boom. Import it. That's how you import it. Now, so we have a service file. That service file, in the constructor, we need to inject the HTTP module. So what you do is private HTTP, it's your variable, with reference to what you need is client, HTTP client. You can then create a method called get employees, which you define function, method function, same thing. Then you go this dot, this dot, ah, this HTTP, which is the one that you just referred, dot, here the method that it supports, get, and get is waiting for a URL string, so you're expecting a URL. And that we can go into our dummy URL. I'm gonna share this thing below. It's just a REST API. So you call this API, and the thing here you don't forget, you need to return it. So return the call, and then this method needs to be calling your component. If you go to containers, features dashboard, TS file, this is where you import private. And then what I do like to do is I like to name the class names, same thing, do not confuse anyone, because who doesn't like confusion? With a small letter is my variable, and this is the reference to the file. And now we've import the file into my component. Now I can go access to it. We haven't talked about cycles. One of the cycles in Angular has ng on it, is when you initialize the components. And when you initialize the component, I want to access the service file, and I want to call the employees method. That method is then going to call through the HTTPs and call the API and return the data. How do I do it to it? I subscribe to it. And when I subscribe to it, I'm going to get a response through here. Now, if you've talked about functions, this is going to be, this is the variable. I'm just going to put any for now. And then I have access to it by doing console log. Response. Response. Is it RSP? No, let's put RSP now like a response. So once I get it, I want to load it here on a unit. Let's have a look. Angular, load it. Inspect elements, console log, just refresh it. This employee says don't get employees is not a function. Ooh. Let's click on it. It is a function. It's saying it's not a function. How rude. Woo. I know the mistake. So the issue is you've created a service and you've got a created service in, in the CLI, but you've not included the service in your node module. So it does not exist. Um, so what you need to do, services you define in your providers, like this, and then you import it. Now what I'd like you to do again with this, I would like to create a const services. There you go. And then put it here. And that way I've included in that module, and now that should work. Can't resolve. Can't resolve. Module not found HTTP HTTP. Aha, uh -huh, my import is acting weird. Mm, it's easier when it's, there's an import. It's all good. Dashboard. In my services. Let's just send double HTTP. That's normal. So in the services, it just automatically imported the wrong path. So it's common HTTP. Right click. Just let's refresh it. Because when you're building, running 
in the zero, which is compiling in the background, right? So there's a response, status and data. But what I need is data access, yeah? I want to get access to the data. How do you get access to the data? Well, in response, you can specify targeting data. And that should return you data, yeah? Beautiful, you have data. What do I, well, how do I render it in the front end? Rendering it, you can create a variable called um, employees list, which is going to be an array. But for now, always type your, 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 your details. So I want to get the type of an employee. So what I do is, instead of any here, I'm going to have employee object. This is an interface. Employee object string 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 beautiful because they're all strings. And now, so employee lists. What I want to do is I want to go this so employee and assign response from the data from the right to the left. Always you're assigning it. Assign it to the employee list. Now, if I do, I'll go to HTML, so dashboard HTML, you can double uh, mustache. You can show the employee list, but it's a whole big object. So what you want to do is you can add a JSON pipe and that will export or export, it will just visually show this dump. But you want to make it more beautiful, so you can wrap it in pre-tags and you get this beautiful, beautiful tag. So that's how it outputs it. But it's nice, you want to now run through the list. Now in Angular, we talked about different kind of components. One of them is uh, structural directives, which is part of the Angular's boom, 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 browser module or common module, which you see here. Now what you want to do is you just put a div. Inside there, you want to do ng4, and then you want to say let, which is something like an item of this employees list. So Loop through, so loop through employees list and every item in the employees list, console log it out. Now, this is going to be our object again, because it's still an object, right? But look at this. One second, refresh. Object, object, because it can't read it. If you add a pipe, love pipes in Angular. So much simplified life. Boom, you know it. Now I can access specifically this dot item employee name. And I got it. Now it's showing in string because it's outputting a JSON pipe. So just remove that. Look at that. You've got all the users nice like that. So if you go to profile, you don't see it. If you go to dashboard, you see the users get requested. It, lets, it loads it nicely, as they say. Um, and then if you want to just beautify it a little bit. But you know what? Beautify it next lesson. Beautify it. Beautify it. That's a new word. Beautify it. Okay, that's how you load an angular, right? Simple, dimple, lemon squeezy, whatever you call it, sneezy. Anyway, what do I do here? Let's convert this into a component, into a function component. We already know how to do that, so all you do is function. Instead of extend, we don't need to extend. We remove this. And then we don't have render method because it's a function, it just return. If you just write render this, got the right. So that's it. I like React, it's gonna start very quickly. There you go. Dashboard, profile, all works the same. So what do we do? There's a thing called first we need to create a variables function. So we can use the use state, which I like. So you have const. You would have employee, employee, and you would have set employee. Beautiful. Which is use state. Beautiful. Now look at that quick thing. It imported it here. Show away. Yeah. Use state from React. Oops. And then you have you set the state for the employee to be an empty array. Beautiful. Now if I do console log this out. Remember, single in React, double in Angular. Maybe just want to be cool. So it's empty, it's empty, it's nothing, it's not showing anything. But if I say John, or John, not knowing how to spell properly, 
you get junk here. Yeah, this one showing, this one showing up. Now, because this is the dynamic that loads into this uh, profile here, I need to add some styling so it's about stable. Anyway, it's empty, right? What we're doing, it's empty. Next one is use effect. So I use effect, um, and we want to run this little baby. So what do we want to run with this little baby? We want to do fetch, Ooh. fetch. What do we want to use? Because it's part of. Don't worry about it. So we want to fetch this URL. So we'll fetch it here. That's how you do a call. As this is a promise, you can do then. Give me the response and actually the response return it to me into JSON. Nice. Then I want to take the response. And actually, we already know this. When the response comes back, we need to get the data object, remember? Because this is it records the data, status and data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna use set employee. That's what I love about these folks. And we're going to take the response and we're just going to turn the name over different to not have duplicate shadow names. Response and I'm going to put passing response data. So response from the API assigning it to set employees. So putting that object blob into this into the employees object. If I render it now, I think it may just, yeah, you get errors. He doesn't know what the hell to do with it. He hasn't got a pipe, he hasn't got nothing. So how do we now render it? Now we've got this and we're storing it in an employee state. Now let's take this employee state. And now what we need to do in React is a little bit different thinking, is we need to create a list of HTML, this blob HTML that we're gonna then put it, render it into our dashboard um, return here. So I'll show you what it makes sense. So I do a const of employees, employees list. And what I need to do is I need to go through employee all right, map it. I need to take every item, but I'm just going to do double. Double item, and I'm going to take an index, and I'll tell you why in a second. And I'm going to return for every item in that array a div element, and I'm going to output the item inside of it. Now, this employee list, this item I don't, is going to be an object because every employee is an object. You just want to get the name. So I can do employee underscore name. And then the employee list, so when it groups back the HTML, the whole big blob, I want to put it into this dashboard list, in this dashboard page. So I'm going to do it like this. Boom! And it rendered it for me nicely. So, but I bet there's going to be an error because, so when it creates these HTML, it needs a tag, it needs like some kind of key identification. So it's going to say, hey, buddy, there's a key, you're missing a key, a unique key for each HTML element. And it's easy to solve. All you do is key, and the key it has to be unique identifier for each HTML object. Just do, oops, not in, index. Refresh this. No errors there. Beautifully loaded the users. Nicely. Tiger, Garrett, Ashton, Centric. Well, it's working. Great. In the React, we have now beautifully created a um, employee list, we have an Angular created employee list, we call the API, receive back the data, and we render it. That's the basic way of creating it. That's what I think you see in every Angular material, Angular documentation online. But what you normally do, you create a state management. So you have a state management layer you know, apart from this. So you have a service, you would have a state management action that would manage the whole state, and then your components would normally subscribe to the state and return back the data. This is good that you get into it of calling it and you understand the cycle, like you get the data, render it, get the data, render it. Um, for a basic app, this is really good, but when you get more complicated, you just need to refactor a little bit. But I'll show you how to refactor it. It's not that difficult. Now, what else? Well, in the next lesson, what I'd like to talk about is, wrong list. What I'll talk about is click on each one of these and then accessing the, uh, that employee's details. And maybe not in putting in a dashboard, maybe putting it into well, it could be an employee's list, you know, an employee is a dashboard. But it's a good lesson. I think it's a good tweak. I actually made it in 20 minutes. So cutting this should be pretty simple and quick. What did I forget to say? Don't forget to subscribe and like, guys. Every subscribe counts. It helps. It, 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 it does. It does really help. So, what do I finish off? This is already pushed, committed. 
all up in the clouds. But, you know. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for coming here. I know all the stress in the world. Let's keep it chill. Um, let's stay safe and calm. And I hope you guys are doing doing or having a wonderful day. And I'll see you next lesson. Cheers. Bye bye. You still here? I said, see you next lesson. Ciao. No. Come ahead and switch on the video.